Your two newest members of your Chicago Sky as broadcast last night on ESPN for the WNBA draft. Those are names, even if you are a casual basketball fan, those are names you should know. You saw those two battling it out. Yes. On the court, throwing elbows, talking trash in each other's ear. I was having discussions with people about it on Twitter last night, and it's like, what can we call them? Can we call them the bad girls? Like, is is this, mm. are the is the sky getting ready to go into their bad girl era? I don't think they're bad. I think they were just playing t- hard nosed basketball. Yeah, I mean, like the bad boys. Yeah, but they're yeah. not. I, don't, I think that that would connote some level of dirtiness or or wanting to hurt opponents like the bad boys did. The bad boys were. I you, mean, I, I would say take a closer look at Angel Reese's highlight tape. There's some stuff in there. If she's not undercutting people or I mean, there's. Okay. I would just say that she she plays to the echo of the whistle. It's one of the things I think that makes her great. She's a double-double machine. Double-double machine. Which is great. And we saw. Double-double machine. And Camila Cardoso clearly is a force. She is a force. She's six 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 seven six seven. Six seven controls the paint, became a better shooter, understands where her points come from. Needs to be a better free throw shooter. Yeah, because she's gonna get fouled a lot. Yep. But she's she's the WNBA equivalent of a rim runner. Like that's that's what she does. And here's what I like about Camila Cardoso's game that I wish that bigs of all shapes and sizes would work on. When she gets the ball, it stays up here. She puts it up here because you can't get it because she's taller than you. And that's what you're supposed to do. And she's figured it out like with her feet and everything else. It's very impressive. Her performance in the national championship game. And look, we could also say that these are the, these are the two women that stood in the way of Caitlin Clark winning a national championship. Oh, those storylines when they play Indiana are going to be great. Yeah. I mean, and every team, this is what you better get used to, no matter what WNBA team is yours, the sales of Caitlin Clark are going to be unashamed. No matter how good your team is, no matter how many championships you've won, no matter how much money they spend, the the marketing power of Caitlin Clark knows no bounds. Well, we as as folks on Twitter – that live in Chicago started looking for the tickets because they they're going to play two games in Indiana first, the the sky and the fever, but then June 23rd, it's going to be the fever over at Wintrust. Tickets are gone. They're gone. So now you got to go secondary market and Wintrust holds 10,000. So it's not like, you know, like it's, it's a small venue. Like they were playing on campus at DePaul or Loyola. Like, this is a, a fairly significant place, and you're going to pay a lot of money to get in to see Caitlin Clark versus the sky because the storylines write themselves. Like I said, here are the two women over the last two years that have stood in the way of her getting a national championship. And now they play for the sky. What's crazy to me is the turnover that the sky have had over the last two years. This is a portion of their roster that won the WNBA championship, okay? Allie Quigley, gone. Courtney Vandersloot, gone. Candace Parker, gone. Clay Copper. KFC, gone. But in that case, that allowed the door to open up for you to get what you got last night. Big Steph Dolson. Stephanie Dolson, gone. Diamond to Shield's gone, but now she's back, and she's been through hell. So that's a, that's one of those stories that I'm looking forward. I know that Annie's done some writing on it. I know that Shake has done some writing on it. That's a story that probably needs to be told like more in depth, but I'm happy that Diamond to Shield's is back. Uh, she's a dynamic, athletic player, and having her in the backcourt, I think, is going to help a lot with this. This is a – it's fun to – I don't know about you, Dan. I don't know if you care about this type of stuff because you're not as sentimental as I am. But I enjoy the collective awakening of something. And I think that's what's happened with women's college basketball. 
that there's been a collective awakening like oh this is kind of fun like oh wait we can do the what we usually do with other sports here's white hat here's black hat we can do all that oh there's a star how about angry old heads how about embittered angry old heads yeah we're gonna talk about this in depth too but it is it is shocking the level of hate that that is out there from some of the old heads but now how does that translate and i think so far from what we're seeing like the react i'd love to know what their ratings were on the draft i haven't seen anyone post them yet they're gonna be a record i'm sure i i'm sure and it's nice and tidy too in and out i thought that the interviews the interviews at this draft and i don't know if that's just because of how like ensconced like holly Rowe is with the w and with college basketball she did great interviews like actual interviews knowing who the player is knowing that player's story and then presenting it to us as the viewer while She's talking to the player. And it's not also like this NFL draft misery porn and poverty porn, which is, is I, I've, I have become allergic to some of this stuff. Like you got to see this grew up in a house with 27 brothers and no running water and needed football to get. Like, there seems to be more gratitude. There's a little of that because, you know, people have stories like Camilla's one of those people. Like one of the things she said and she started to cry when she was talking. She's like, look, I I came here. I, I came here from Brazil to help give my family a better life. Like the, the, the awesome immigrant stories that we hear from around, you know, the, this, this country. Here, here you go. Here's another one of those stories. And she said, now I can give them that life. And I don't know, like, if the rules... Because that's one of the things that surprised me about Zach Eady. I don't know if the NIL rules on Camila Cardoso are the same as they are on Zach Eady, where they can't even really eat off of their success because they're on student visas. So now she has the opportunity to win, make some real money, and I'm happy for her. The Angel Reese thing, Angel's a, a star, and... I think that she has an opportunity. There's been a vacuum of young stars in Chicago. And now we got a couple of them. You've got Connor Bedard. You've got Angel Reese. And soon you'll have Caleb Williams here. It's going to be fun to see how the interaction is. We're talking about Gen Z superstars now. What's that like? If, If I'm the sky, I'm trying to figure out a way to collaborate Angel Reese, Connor Bedar, Caleb Williams. Well, this this guy has to immediately invest money, a lot of money, staff up. Like you got to understand what that you can't miss out on this opportunity. You're probably too late to it. Yeah, you're you're. Let's not say too late. Let's say behind. You're you're, you're behind. Staff up, spend, and if you need to run at a loss this year, or or for two years to invest in infrastructure in your overall footprint and in the way that you look to potential free agents and the the level at which you are doing your business when it comes to travel accommodations when it comes to how you're you're taking care of your players you're going to have to spend money to make money and now is the time to do it cuz is you're, you now is when the energy is here now is when you're you're riding the crest of a wave of support and excitement if you can't do it now, you you pick the wrong business. Yes. This is the time. Like, now you're in a space where people – well, the other part of it is that there are eyes on the sky now. Like, the, the, in, more so than the championship because of the raised interest in it. So they have to act as if eyes are on them. They've got to get some of this stuff fixed. And what you're talking about – is a real investment in the product. So if there's a real investment in the product, it can flourish. You you know for sure that there's going to be two games where you're going to be sold out. You know that for sure. And I imagine that those two games are going to find their way to a national television market too. 
because we know that 90% of Indiana's games are on national television anyway. And when you throw in, like, it, here's Cardoso and Angel Reese. It, it writes itself. Like, you should be able to do that. But, yes, they've got to figure a lot of stuff out and, and make, make this happen. Like, these two players have an opportunity. These two, two, two players give you the opportunity to make your franchise hot. Like, y- you want to be cool? You want to be the, 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 the cool thing to do in the summer in Chicago? Here's your opportunity. People know who they are. Get them out there. Sell sell those tickets that aren't the the Caitlin Clark game. Get in with the shoe and apparel companies too. And I know that's more on a league level, but if you look at what is has been happening with the shoes, the fact that you have a Sabrina Onescu shoe that Javante Green is wearing, that a lot of NBA players just like the model of the shoe. And when you order online, when you go to whatever it is, Nike or Under Armour or Adidas, and you pick out a model, it immediately will ask men's or women's. There's, there's, you don't, there's no such thing anymore as just a women's shoe or just a men's shoe. There is a model, there's a design, there's proportion, and anybody can get anything. That's a unisex market right now. And when NBA players are telling you, yeah, the Inescu is a really good shoe. Yes. And they're wearing it because they that's their job. They're choosing that model because they and, – and there aren't a lot of sports where you get this crossover. You don't see PGA golfers using the same sticks as, as, as the women use. They might be a, a, a tweak here and there. might be the same brand name on it. But the fact that basketball is leading the charge on this – then you're going to see all sorts of playgrounds with a lot of sky stuff and a a lot of WNBA stuff. Well, Cameron Brink is in the new balance commercial with Zach Levine. You know, the, the, can we come to get the commercial? She's in that. Yeah. So she's the blonde there. There's, there's clearly an opportunity to cross over. And I mean, Angel Reese should be on every television show possible that they can they can throw every news she should be on channel nine news like whatever they can do to put her out there because she she has a huge following and she's charismatic and she she seems like the type of person that your son or daughter was watching and being like oh angel reese is cool so here's an opportunity to to sell the product through your players and then allow them to sell the product through their play. Now, I don't know if things are going to turn around for the sky immediately, but I think they're in good shape. I mean, there's always some, you have to get used to it and they're going to have to get used to playing together in the front court. Do they still have only one person doing general manager and coaching? I mean, I mean, Teresa Witherspoon has a staff. Yeah, but, like, She's got a couple of WNBA players on her staff, but okay. yes, they, as an organization, they have not been as staffed up as they need to be. Stop that. Stop that. Look look at the industry standard and meet it or exceed it. That's your responsibility right now, rather than just presuming that every Chicago sports fan is is now because of, of because you're just on the coattails of this, that people are going to show up. Earn it. Prove it. They do on their website, the Sky, have a general manager and a head coach. So I don't know when that happened. Je- Jeff Pagli- Paglioka? He did a really good job getting them in position to draft these two players. And Teresa Withers- Witherspoon is the head coach. Okay. Last name is spelled P-A-G-L-I-O-C-C-A. Apologies if I butchered it. Either, well, I mean... Palioka or Paglioka, depending on the extent to which one would pronounce the G in America rather than not in Italy. America. It's like Tom Gugliata was always Gugliata, and I asked him, I said, why do we pronounce the G? Because you probably shouldn't. He said, it, it, it's Gugliata, but everybody here pronounces the G. Oh, okay. It's good to know. Good player. Media day for the sky is May 8th. Okay. And then they open up a week after that. 
But I mean, this process should, it, they shouldn't wait. Like, don't wait until May 8th. Like, sell this thing. Because this is the thing. Take that heat. That- not, not just that. We're getting to maybe the most beautiful time of year in the city. The, the tourists are already here. People, this is the lakefront and everything that is, is going to be happening here. Get out there. Get out there among the people. Don't just wait for everybody to come to you. Meet everybody more than halfway. Yeah. And that costs money. It does. The marketing budget is a thing. It's it, all of it, all of it costs money, but you have the potential here to you can sell, even though you sold off the championship team, you can sell, hey, two years ago, we were champions. And now We've rebuilt, but we're rebuilding behind these players. But we're still a championship legacy and a championship. 